Uh, my name is Paul Fletcher. I'm the Bernard Wolf Professor of Health Neuroscience at Cambridge University, and I'm a consultant psychiatrist as well. I'm here for the uh, Daedalus Research Cafe meeting discussing uh, the factors leading to and exacerbating the recently described syndrome, the hubris syndrome, which uh, Lord Owen believes is an important factor con to consider in uh, politicians, particularly successful politicians. Where do I think the research should be going and what factors play an important part? I, I think that in neuroscience now we've experienced an explosion of information about how the animal and the human brain functions at a low level. I think the real challenge now is to begin to understand how these low-level processes manifest in higher-order decisions and behaviours, particularly... Um, if you like, suboptimal behaviours such as choosing the wrong foods, making gambling decisions, um, uh, taking drugs, these sorts of things which pose a real problem generally, I think neuroscience has to aim itself at. Well, I don't think there's a lack of um, desire to do that. Sorry, shall I say that again? That's all right. Why do, why do I think it hasn't succeeded in that so far? I don't think there's a lack of desire to do that, and I think there's an increasing number of clinical people who are interested in basic neuroscience. I think it's partly not succeeded because the challenges are huge. We need to bring together a number of levels of inquiry from the genetic to the molecular to the neurobiological right through to the higher level psychological and policy based research and I think that's going to require people talking to people in new and, and creative ways. At one level you could say it's not that important because very few people are in positions of power and therefore very few people might have it. But actually, if you're in a position of power, what you do affects lots and lots of other people. So any decision taken at the political level affects hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. In addition, I think that understanding hubris sy syndrome in other domains might be important. For example, people who have relative autonomy in their jobs where they're making important clinical decisions. Um, if they're prone to failing to look at the evidence, failing to listen to others, failing to consult, failing to criticise themselves, then this sort of behaviour might be very deleterious to their patients or their clients.